Hey my friends, what is up? Derek here from Bomb Socks with more Bomb Bites where we feast upon the words of Christ one bite at a time. So I want to go back to yesterday's episode and unpause where we left off. We had the wonderful story of the woman with the issue of blood who just by her faith was able to touch the clothes of Jesus and able to be healed. But we remember we were in the middle of a story of a wonderful man by the name of Jairus who came to Jesus and said, my daughter is at the point of death. I pray thee come and lay thy hands on her that she may be healed and that she shall live. And Jesus went with him and much people followed him and thronged him. That's where all of a sudden we had the story of the woman with the issue of blood come in. But I remind you, here's Jairus, I imagine, who was watching this whole thing as Jesus pauses and he's like, who touched me? Jairus had to be right there with him. As I was going through this story, I had some questions that I want to pose to you because these questions came to my mind as well. What thoughts and feelings do you imagine that Jairus had as he watched the Savior pause and help this woman? Does Jairus is watching this experience of Jesus healing the woman with the issue of blood, does it empower him to believe in Jesus Christ more? Or does it cause him to fear that it might not happen for him and his family because it may be too late? And then more for you and I, when you watch miracles happen for other people, even though you are showing faith in Jesus Christ, does it excite you to think that Jesus can do the same thing for you and your family? And does that validate your faith? Or do you start getting impatient, wondering when and if it will happen for you? Please tell me I am not the only one who has gone through some of those emotions and thoughts as you watch other people experiencing the miracles of Jesus Christ. And you're just like, um, I'm right here, you know, and there is a temptation to be able to all of a sudden start thinking it's going to be too late if Jesus doesn't intervene. Well, as I was going through, I found a, a really cool Christian blog. Uh, there's a lot of wonderful, good, faithful Christians out there who understand some great things about the story. And we can learn some wonderful things here. So this person, I love how they said this. They said, on the way to heal Jairus's desperately ill daughter, Jesus did the unthinkable. He paused, right? He paused and all of a sudden you had the woman with the issue of blood. He stopped to identify who touched him and then he spoke gently with the woman. You can imagine what Jairus was thinking. There's no time for this. My daughter is dying. And then his worst fears came true. Jesus appeared to have delayed too long and his daughter had passed away. As you go to verse 35, a ruler from his house that said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? So this young girl most likely died while Jesus was stopping to help the woman with the issue of blood. Verse 36, As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. And then calmly ignoring the mockery of onlookers, Christ spoke to Jairus' daughter and she came back to life. In fact, I love down in verse number 41, he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha kumai, which is being interpreted damsel or little girl, I say unto you, arise. And straightway, there's that word again, straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was the age of 12 years. And they are astonished with great astonishment. He charged them straightly that no man should know it and commanded that she should be given something to eat. <laughs> it's like, this girl's probably hungry. Back to this blog. He revealed that he can never be too late. Time can't limit what he is able to do and when he chooses to do it. How often do we feel like Jairus, thinking that God was simply too late to accomplish what we had hoped for? But with God, there is no such thing. Now, you think of a lot of quotes out there. There's so many good ones that are just about, you know, reminding us to stay faithful in this process and don't lose that hope, to be not afraid, but only believe. I was thinking of Elder Holland's quote, one that many of you are familiar familiar with where he says, don't give up, don't you quit. You keep walking, you keep trying, there is help and happiness ahead. It will be all right in the end. Trust God and believe in good things to come. And let these experiences, when you see someone else being healed, when you may not be seeing that healing on your own, let that validate your faith that Jesus is able to do those things and then trust that he knows what is right and when to do it. Now, as I'm saying all of this to you, I know this is easier said than done. I myself struggle with this. As I see people being healed and touched by wonderful experiences, I'm wondering, it's like, um, there's ones that I am aware of that could certainly use that help. If we can make sure to use these experiences to be able to build our faith and trust and not to lose that hope, but to know that Jesus Christ is able to do these things 
Let that validate our faith and know that he can do and will do the same for us as well. You know, you put these two together, you can see a lot of difficulties, but I love the resolution there. And I believe as we show that faith, as we be not afraid and only believe, I think we'll see the same things happen in our lives. I know that that is true and I have faith that that will happen. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks as always for sharing. So grateful that you do that. And please check out our amazingly comfortable gospel themed socks at bombsocks.com. Have a great day and we'll see you next time. Godspeed. Bye-bye.